they put me on a pedestal when wow. when they thought I was American. Can I cut you in here really quickly? Go ahead. Why do you think Ameri why do you think French people, especially French people who hate America yeah. and hate Americans and find us loud and all kinds of things, you know what I'm saying? And we're this and we're that. Why do they get enamored by Americans? That's what they say, but why? deep down they like us. deep down they love what America is about. Yes. And you can't so they say that, but deep down. But deep down, they do. Like America has influenced Everything. more of the world than any other country. And not only America, black America. Black America. Yeah. Black, yeah. black yeah, let's America. Let's be more specific. Black specific. female. Hey, 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 slow your roll, baby. Hey, she got hit with something. <laughs> Seriously, man. No, as much as I love her. Way. Ray, ah, way, ah. Thank you. <laughs> I stopped right there. Thanks so much for being here today. We have a special, 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 special treat for you. What we're doing here today is we have collected, curated some of the most fabulous, stunning, brilliant, intelligent, black, and proud expats here in Paris who will just be sharing their experiences with you and pros and cons and what they have found here in Paris to be their experience, illusions, romances, all of it. Yeah, we're going to talk about it all today and I'm really excited. So to begin, I'm just going to have everyone go around and just say whatever they want to say. Daniel, uh, engineer here in Paris and uh, met Ray a couple of weeks ago. Now I'm here. Awesome. Thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. Melissa. Hey, yeah, my name is Melissa and I am a language assistant here in France, in South Seine, and I moved here about two months ago. So. Uh, my name is Damon. I've been here six months now and I'm just living life, starting things new. That's it. My name is Michael. Uh, I am a translator and marketing project manager. I've been in France for three and a half years and I've been in Paris for two. I'm Benjamin, Benji for short. Um, I've been in France for about two years. Uh, I was a student, did a master's degree and uh, I'm a project manager now. Wow, master's degree, okay. Um, I'm Rachel, I am an artist and I'm fresh to Paris. I've only been here for two months. I'm Samantha, I, um, uh, I've been on and off in Paris for about six years and I uh, just finished my master's. Um, literally, I, yeah. And, uh, Congratulations! And uh, at the moment I'm working um, as an assistant to a writing residency for screenwriters. Ooh, cool. yes. I told y'all these are rock stars here, people. <laughs> rock stars, rock stars, rock stars. Okay, so you know they say that you can get more. What is it? More honey, more bees with honey versus salt, whatever that is. Okay. More flies with honey than with vinegar. Fantastic. So we're gonna start with the positives today. <laughs> so anyone wants to start? Uh, what are some positives that you found here in Paris, France, wherever you're living in France, versus where you're from? What? Has Wait, go ben? Shaka. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's an easy one. It's an easy one. So, so one thing that I love about um, France in general is they know how to enjoy life, mm. and that's basically me, right? So, work hard, play harder. That's one of my models. And the French, they know how to play and take the time out to enjoy life. And you don't feel I'll Nigerians know how to, by the way, he's from Nigeria. Where in Nigeria oh, yeah. are you from? I'm from Kaduna State. Mm -hmm. And tell yeah. me what the vibe is like there. Um, I mean, everyone's just trying to, you know, grind and work to, you know, eat food the next day and shit like that. So. Exactly. Like yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Just trying to eat. So everyone's just working, working, but we know how to party, you know, and it's time to party, you know how to party, that's for sure. He could testify. Like <laughs> <laughs> Are you a party, Daniel? He's I'm also Nigerian, so. Yeah. Where are you from Nigeria? Are you from? 
I'm from Lagos. I'm born in Lagos. Ooh. They know how to party more than we do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Are you? Are you sure you know where he's from? Do you know where? Kaduna, yeah, Kaduna yeah. is up north. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never been up north. Yeah. yeah. So that's the one positive thing that you say about France yeah. is that they know how to chill out, enjoy, enjoy chill. life. Mm -hmm. Anyone so, else? I'd agree with that. I feel like I'm American, so I'm from the states. I'm from Virginia, and I feel like there's more of a a work life balance in yeah. France that I don't have back in the States in terms of even in the States it's like you grind and you grind and you grind and that's great but there's this always this expectation of even if your hours are nine to five you're expected to stay till six just to exactly. prove that you're really committed exactly. and in like my experience both as a student in France and working in France like my boss will kick me out at 6 30. Like I work 9.30, 6.30, and it's, if it's past 6.30, she's like, why are you still here? Like, go home. <laughs> really? She's like, you're young, go have fun, get out, go to a restaurant, don't you have friends? Like, shoot. <laughs> and like, I appreciate the work ethic that I have as an American woman, um, and especially as a black American woman. Um, however, given the option, will I continue working in France for my five weeks of paid vacation instead of going home for my maybe two weeks of paid vacation per year? 100%. Yeah, like you have to have, like, in order for you to legally work full time, your employer is required to give you five weeks of payment. Oh, wow. Okay. Give me more positives. What are some more positives here in France for you all? Uh, I want to say the quality of food. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. That's a good point. The quality of food, mm -hmm. right? Compared to the way it was in New York, I think the food is just like way better, fresher, cheaper, mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy, like how you compare the fruit, the vegetables that we have access to here compared to like in New York City. There's like a market here in like every community I find. Right. Mm -hmm. With like the fresh veggies and the fruits. Yeah. Because yeah. that's hard to find, you know, when I was coming up in Brooklyn, that was hard to find. Maybe now with the gentrification, but that was really hard. Well, to I mean, find. even with gentrification in the city, I don't mm -hmm. think. A lot of areas still have See? access to proper milk, dairy, fish, meat, all that stuff. Do you think it's the same in the banlieue, or is it just in Paris that is the clean, fresh food? Do you think the banlieue, you know, like deep out, I, out they can find the same? I think so. They can, even yeah? mm -hmm. well, Rachel doesn't like our little uh, <laughs> market. <laughs> That's on the other side of the canal, but right. I like it, and I think there are some really good finds there. Okay. So whatever ethnicity that you are, whether you're Middle Eastern, African, Spanish, you just just about find everything at this store. Example: She was looking for black beans. Okay. Yes, because Rachel is vegan. Yes, yes. she's vegan. She's so vegan. I said to her, "I'm gonna go and check out a little store and see if we have it." Sure enough, they had it. She went to like Mono Pre, like two other right, stores, right. no dice. Right, but this place had it. This so you place? can find fresh stuff in the bullion. Yes. Sure Tell me more, what are some of the positives before you, you know, because I'll get into the negatives. <laughs> <laughs> what are more positives here in France? A I know. of education. Oh, excuse me, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I think the affordability of health care is oh, a yeah. big thing. Okay. So Important. I come from um, the U.S. also, Florida. Don't say nothing about Florida people. That was my father lives in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I made a face, but I wasn't gonna say anything. In Florida, I live there. I don't claim it. Okay, so I live in Florida, <laughs> and um, just to give you a comparison, so the other day I was sick, and but I had two weeks vacation, even though I just got here. So I was sick on my vacation, but um, I went to the doctor, and it was like. He said, oh, your fee today will be seven euros and 50 cents. I'm waiting for him to say more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what else? <laughs> but just like that, like, I know we had, we're supposed to have a brunch a couple of weeks ago, and I told you guys that I was sick. And this, I'm texting the group chat at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.30 yep. in the morning, like, yo, I'm not going to make it. I'm sick. I asked for like an urgent care doctor to come to my house mm -hmm. and i'm assuming because it's 4 30 in the morning like and i make this request online and like i'm not thinking that like i'm assuming like okay well they're going to come at some point in the morning like when they arrive at the office mm -hmm. or whatever and i get a call like from urgent care like hey there's some information missing from your apartment 
from your address. And I'm like, okay, so I give them the information and they're like, okay, the doctor will be there in like 10, 15 minutes. I'm like, it is 4.30 in the morning. And how much was the fee when they came? It was 25 euros and it was fully reimbursed, so. So do we have that in the States with doctors? Do we have a one? I did not know this term. Reimbursed. 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 Reimbursed.
so cheap. Y'all are brilliant. It's so cheap. No, not everybody should get a master's. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Master's, master's, master's. I paid 10 grand for my master's. Where did you go? 10 grand? Why? Why was it not 10 grand? It's a public university. Did you go to In France, there's a difference between les universités, which are public universities that are funded by the states, and then there are les grandes écoles, which are private universities ah. that cost more. By American standards, they still don't cost still a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a public university. I went to the Université de Limoges, mm -hmm. which is in a very small town called Limoges. It's in the center of France. And everyone who's watching who's French will look at me and immediately go, why is there an American person in Limoges? Because that's what the response that I get a lot. Uh -huh. But I paid uh, 245 euros okay. per okay. year for my <laughs> master's that I got in France. Yeah. So literally your master's is more expensive than paying for your visa. Yeah. Because no. the visa is expensive. No, my, the, no, a student visa, I paid 50. Oh, student uh, visa! Student visas are set, well, I paid 75. I oh, because I have an artist visa and I paid hundreds and hundreds of My dollars. work visa was 250, 300. Yeah. Ah, so I now have a work What pieces of advice from a positive space, would you give to someone who is looking to move to Paris, whether it's for school, whether it's for art, work, what piece of advice would you give them? You can just jump in this. Save every document you've ever had since you were born. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Number one. Save every document? <laughs> Why? Yeah, Why do you say that? Because the French administration will ask you for every document. They're going to give you a list of documents. Mm -hmm. That they want you to bring with you. You come with this list of documents. They're going to ask you for documents that they're not to ask you to bring. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> they want all the documents. So every time I have to go to the prefecture, I have just a folder that has every document that they could possibly ever ask a me dossier. for. Yeah. <laughs> a dossier. A dossier, exactly. A dossier. A dossier. With voilà. everything that they could possibly ask me for, just in case. And it's always the day that I come with everything that they never ask me for nothing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and the day that I forget <laughs> one thing, and that's the day that they ask me for something. So. <laughs> How about you, Melissa? What advice would you give to someone coming over, wanting to come over to France? On the spot. Cool. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not ready, someone else can go. <laughs> um, I would say, I would say there is a way for you to get here. So if you go around the room, we're all here on like different types of visas, mm -hmm. and and we made it. So if you want to come to France, you can do it. You just have to have a lot of determination mm. and really know why you want to come to this country. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's stop there. That was really what she just said. You have to be clear. Why do you say that? Can you go a little deeper? Because I think in the first few I think the first two weeks after I came here, I'd come here before as a tourist, and I was like, I love, I love Paris. I want to live here. I'm going to get a French boyfriend and marry him and whatever. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so wait, but listen, so Anne's shaking her head like this too. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. But I, yeah, I get it. Well, yes and no. Yeah. Yes and no. Yes and no. Yes and no. But okay. after two weeks, I think I landed. I landed in the middle of September, and two weeks later, I was telling my friend Steve, I'm like, I'm going home. I'm going home. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because it's like finding a place, getting a bank account, yes. um, anything, like everything. getting a Navi Go Pass, like everything <laughs> was so much, and I'm like, I'm going home. <laughs> like, um, But I think knowing why I'm here gives me that, okay, that determination to stay. So I, you, it's really important to have a clear... Um, focus and reason for being here. Otherwise, the administration will make you um, want to leave. Yeah, French administration, you gotta be patient. Yeah. yeah. So documents, understanding, and having a clear vision of why you're coming to France. Daniel, I'm listening some more. So, what advice would you give someone coming from Lagos, someone coming from London, if they wanted to move to France? And I think now is the time. You know, France has this culture. Macron, especially, who was really welcoming startups mm -hmm. across okay. across yeah. Europe. So he's really promoting that, and he's trying to poach people from England because, because of the situation, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are coming. Okay. Yeah. So, like, so if you're into startups, this is probably a good place to... Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, France has a big culture. Paris has a big culture of startups, and yeah. I know with the, with the gates kind of closing on England or the UK at the minute, people are looking for something else right now in oh, France. And you really think the gates are closing on the UK? For a while, mm -hmm. it'll not for long. Not for long. I think okay. it'll stabilize. It's, it's not the end of the world. Okay. 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 Tell me. 
what would you give advice to someone coming into wanting to move to France or coming or what advice would you give? Rachel. Okay. <laughs> Rachel, you guys. Okay, and it's okay to give you a chance to speak. Really? Okay. Okay. She, she looks so offended. <laughs> she looks so offended. Uh, I didn't put you on the spot. I just got it. Exactly. So maybe you can have some advice for a newbie, someone who's thinking about it or wanting to come. Um, I think my best suggestion would be to research, to like mm -hmm. have an understanding of like the culture and like the different customs that exist because as someone from New York, like French culture and American culture is very different. So I think just kind of like educating yourself on that, um, maybe even just like neighborhoods because I think people come to Paris and they think that it's all like <laughs> lights and beautiful mm -hmm. and pretty. And I think just understanding like the neighborhoods and like the cultures that exist within those neighborhoods and trying to figure out if this is really somewhere that you want to be. Neighborhoods, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, also, Paris is not France. Paris is not France. Paris is not France. Good point. Was it, what, what do you find the difference? Well, it's the same like London is not. Right. New York is not America. Yeah. Right. Yeah. New York is yeah. surely the, New York is yeah. its own planet. Has it's anyone just, here lived in other? Cities yeah. in France. Yeah. yeah. I've been doing Grenoble. Oh, really? Tiny. It's known for startups also. Yeah. It's one of those startup yeah. hubs in France. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's literally situated in between three mountains in like the Valley of Three Mountains. Yeah. So that was my first impression of France. When I came here, I was like, um, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't want to be here, actually. I did not want to be in Paris. So, so um, but yeah, it's not, it's not France. Yeah. Paris is not France. It's a part of it. But it's right. it's very apart also, mm -hmm. and other and people that have grown up and lived in other areas of France know that. Yeah, I think most Parisians also know that Paris is not France. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give someone wanting to come to France or coming to France? It depends on what they're coming for, mm -hmm. but um, be prepared to be disillusioned <laughs> because <Sure. laughs> it's not it's not. Uh, I mean, you're in the fairy tale for a little while. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. And I think that's a good foundation to, for the later parts where you do become disillusioned and you're like, why am I here? Why am I doing this? This is so hard. Uh, did I make the right decision? I'm far away from my family, from my friends, from what's familiar. So although there there's a period where you, it's a love-hate relationship. Like, I don't know anybody that's been here for a long time that says, I'm still so in love with <laughs> everything about this city. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's hard. Like, it's a big city. And it's another language if you are, if, if, if it's not your native language and you have to learn, if it's another language, it's really hard. And so um, just be prepared for the fact that it's not always going to be how you imagined. But you either decide it's not for you or you decide to take the the negatives with the positives, mm -hmm. that it, the, the positives outweigh the negatives, or the negatives here outweigh or aren't as bad as the negatives wherever you left. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And right. that's kind of right. what it was for me. Right. And then because I did love the city before I came, and I loved Paris, and I loved France, and all these things, um, I do go back to those spots that I first saw, and I was like, wow, you know, this is amazing. Just as a reminder of like why I'm here. Yeah. Like, man, this is a really beautiful place. I was at Prefecture for three hours this morning, but <laughs> way that tower sparkles. Like <laughs> I've got two pieces of advice. Um, first one, most important, learn the language. Second, wow, wow. Hit the nail on the head. No, look. There you go. I've suffered from it, so you know I have to tell everyone yeah. so they don't suffer from it. Um, <laughs> second thing is, if you don't have it already, grow some thick skin. Mm -hmm. and easy. That's tell me it. why you say that. Why? For why? all the reasons they have said <laughs> and more. You know, I, if I start, you know, it could take me forever. And we're not going into the negatives yet, right? Right. So, well, we're getting there. So after Dave, advice. after Dave, we're gonna hop into the negatives. Go, so. Did you even say? Did you give some advice for someone who, who would want to come? Oh, uh, not yet. But right. I would say save as much money. As <laughs> oh, possible. that's real. That's real. Not everybody comes here with a job. Whatever, whatever goal you have in terms of. Coming with Say that money. again, whatever goal. Oh, whatever <laughs> goal you have in terms of saving money to come here, oh, 
times it. three. Yeah. You always said exactly. three. Triple, triple it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, promise yeah. you, triple yeah. it yeah. Oh times three. That's one of the reasons I didn't move to Paris when I first moved here because Paris wow. is expensive. Oh yeah. Oh my god. And once you do the conversion, you lose yes. like twenty yeah, percent of your money. You lose twenty percent right. of your money. Man. So it's it a big like deal to have like your finances in order, and also to piggyback on that, have a French bank account. Mm-hmm. So you can be able to function in mm-hmm. terms of just getting you an apartment, getting your cable, your utilities on, that sort of yeah. thing, because they want you to have a French bank account. Mm-hmm. Without yep. those, you are <clears throat> nothing. <laughs> and he, said, he said, he said, bank account, yeah. triple your money. Yeah. Right. He came Yo, with the Paris. real, real, real Paris. 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 Because all my money I make in the States. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So if I pull over two grand, that's 1,600 euros. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I get upset each and every time. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm here. Like you said, you have to accept it, right? Love, yeah. hate, you're in, you're out. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. You learn how to hustle, too, when you're here. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Tell me more. No, just like, uh, well, if you, if, if you speak English, you can always teach like English lessons. Everybody wants their kid to learn English, mm-hmm. even if the kid doesn't really care. Um, but yeah, like sometimes it requires you, you're not going to get your dream job immediately. Like the hiring process. Uh, so, you know, if you have to have like a side hustle, like that's okay. That's okay. Like you might have to work multiple, multiple jobs to get to the end goal. Okay. But pretty much it's the hustle. You gotta have a hustle. It's a part of the thick skin. Yeah. yeah. You need to do what you need to, you need to do what you have to do. Like you can't, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. But the French people's favorite word is no. Mm. Yeah. They, they always it's say no. It's never yes. And then you're like, why? It's like, it's just no. Impossible. It's not yeah. 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 yeah, what's the reason? There's no reason. It's just no. We're still on the positive side. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, we didn't hear Oh my gosh. We just are back in the street. No, so I said that because she's talking about like having a thick skin and making sure that you're like, that you're determined and that you know what you're here for and that you are able to keep going mm-hmm. because you have that thick skin yeah and that work, work ethic is important yeah, yeah. yeah. it were wasn't you, like yeah were you yeah. saying something Melissa? were you saying something oh no no i was just saying in addition to the no they love to say c'est pas possible nothing yeah. is yeah. possible nothing, nothing possible. is possible and that's hard for me Watch as me? american because everything is possible in the u.s and like, how much everything? it costs yeah. 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 how much that costs how much that costs I'll watch a good show called Narcos. 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 i that we have found here as expats in France. But first, I would love to introduce the fabulous and wonderful Kamaria. She has just joined us. Hello. Want to say a bit something? Go right ahead, sweetie. Uh, what do I say? Whatever you want. <laughs> Why are you here? Okay, hey Where y'all. Where you from? My name's Kamaria. I'm from Chicago. I'm here working as an au pair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, so we're going to get into, we were just originally talking about the pros, you know, the healthcare, the education system, um, as Ben was eloquently saying, how, you know, people here know how to live life, they know how to be calm, they know how to, you know, where's where he's from, it's about the hustle, 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 go, 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 go. Um, but now we're just getting into a little bit of the cons, and I think you used a great word to be disillusioned. Maybe mm-hmm. we should start with you. Some cons. Oh, okay. You know, I, got, I got plenty of cons. I can sit there and talk about many cons. But, <laughs> <laughs> she just finished a thesis on, let's talk about that. And okay, then you can head into the comments. Okay, okay. Brilliant. Uh, so I finished my, my, my dissertation thesis. I associate with a PhD. I do not have a PhD, don't want it. Um, and uh, it was on how Instagram has become a tool of advocacy or like militantism uh, and, and education against misogynoir in France. So basically how people are advocating against the, uh, I'm, speaking formally in my head, but the, the crossing of uh, racism and misogyny when it comes to black women. Um, so 70, 
full pages on uh, history, uh, the history of France and black women's representation in France uh, and uh, colonial history. I actually, in all of my French, because I have a, a bachelor's in French as well, I never learned about any black women ever in French history. Um, and so through this, I was able to, to do that, and there's a lot. And uh, so one thing that I will say, and not everybody, uh, obviously when we talk negatively about the country in which we all live, uh, perhaps that won't be perceived well, but I would like to think that the research I've done is, is congruent with that. But I think that a lot of the times they sweep issues under the rug, these types of issues specifically under the rug. And um, it's unfortunate, but what I think is really cool is that social media, with its many negative sides, um, is being used as a tool to advocate for these, uh, these issues. Um, and so I focus specifically on black women um, because, as we can all probably know, that we are very much so forgotten in the general fight against racism. Um, and feminism and so uh, yeah I would say that was a con that was really difficult and is difficult to to navigate because as Americans we often tend to impose our ideals on others this is true we think that the way that we think about things is how others will think about things that's not the case so in doing this research um, I had to kind of like check myself and say okay this is not their history uh, we share the same, or many shades of the same, entre guillemets, skin color, but the experience is not the same. We cannot equate the experience because the socio-political and socio-historical uh, references are different. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, all that to say that I think the con that I would mention is more so sweeping um, these type of social issues, specifically um, the amount of racism that exists in the country under the rug. Yeah, I hear that a lot. Yeah, I hear that a lot. Oh, public discourse. France is no way as racist as America, and I find yeah. it to be just as racist or even more and sexist and classist and you know all yeah. those different things. So you hear them like, oh yeah, no, France racism is illegal. Racism is <laughs> hidden here. Yeah, it's, it's very swept under the rug. Yeah, but and it's, it's high existent here. Yeah, for sure. And it's not just that, but just in general, I've actually had conversations with French people about this and I can't speak to everybody about it because some people get really uncomfortable mm -hmm. but I'm genuinely coming from a place of curiosity and not mm -hmm. judgment because I, I truly wish to understand why there's such a difference um, and so that's it's been interesting to kind of fine-tune my questions and my attitude when it comes to posing these questions mm -hmm. but uh, yeah it's it's um, that's a con one of the conclusions that I came to is just that there's just no public recognition from political figures specifically who are in positions of power to make concrete changes. Um, there's no public recognition or even open denial of these types of um, phenomena or concepts like intersectionality, misogynoir, these types of things. So as long as there's the public figures aren't necessarily even recognizing that this is an issue, the general public will be less likely to to accept it, um, but on a little bit of a positive note, great. Um, yeah, but despite all of these things, like uh, social media is great. Social media is great for educating people. Of course, you have to be careful what it is that you read, check your sources, but um, it's really, really great for spreading the word about things. Um, I don't know if you guys were here during the manifest, the, the uh, protest. Yeah. Protest. 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 yeah. Uh, Which last one? summer? I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not last Saturday. No, no, no. The the um, uh, 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 it was June second of 2020. Yeah. After George Floyd, yes. literally the world erupted. Oh yeah, 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 I remember that. I was yeah, there, yeah, there were over 10,000 people here, yeah. and I went there, and I was like, whoa. Yeah, was you know, that was that was like a justification for my topic. I was like, all right, like. I'm not just crazy here. Like there wouldn't be thousands of people protesting if this wasn't actually a exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway, yeah. Anyone else want to jump in while we're talking about racism here and the experiences you've had here versus racism in your country? It's really different. Like in London, I feel <clears throat> I worked in London for a year and a half, but I grew up in the north of England. But in London, I feel a lot. I don't think about my blackness much in London. Mm. 
Not like London is just to be honest. London's so multicultural. Mm. It's just everywhere. You know, you've got and also visibly so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like a, like in your government, you have like an Arabic Muslim everybody, mayor. Everybody, everybody, you have everyone there. You know, like on the street in London, even if I'm in central London, you know, you've got Sikhs, you've got Hindus, you've got Muslims, all in different attire. You've got aunties, uncles from different everywhere, all professional, all doing this, all doing that. And then I come to my defense, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and the only black people I see are like the security guards. The only black woman on my floor. Is the cleaning lady who comes in mm. to like mm -hmm. clean? That's what it is. So you don't have any black women who work in your office? There's, or there work? was, there is a. She's quite high up actually. She's a lawyer, um, but she's not there often. Um, but there are not many, and I think even right now I'm one of two black men on my floor. Mm. Really? Yeah. What do you think that is? Because you are a European, or do you consider yourself a European, or not really? Because you're from mm. the UK, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I say I'm British Nigerian. Right. I hyphenate, and that's another thing, the hyphen, hyphenation. Mm -hmm. yeah. In England, in Britain, it's everybody's British this, British right. that. Right. Mm -hmm. but in France, it's like. You're just French. Yeah, you're French. You're French or you're not. Get the fuck out. Yeah, you're French or you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, right. when I moved here, actually, someone introduced me in the company by saying, Daniel was born in England. And I was like, what? Why would you? <laughs> like, when I look <laughs> at other people's introduction, it's like, worked in Saudi, worked in this, worked. And then it's like, Daniel, born in England, England. <laughs> is here to work in. To Why do you think that is? <laughs> There's a different <laughs> level of respect to people assigned to me when they hear me speak versus mm -hmm. when they see me. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, now we get into it. Really good. Talk more. Yeah. Talk more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daniel, talk yeah. more. And it's funny because I'd like to keep. I like to keep quiet for as long as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I always make effort to speak French. But obviously, watching how people change and their reaction it's awesome. when they it's hear amazing. my voice, it's yeah. very interesting. It's, it's, it's just awesome. You know, it's and experience. I realize that the privilege works in my favor in that regard. Mm -hmm. Um compared to how they treat with police as well. You know, like, um, I've been stopped by police, especially during the confinement period, a couple of times, <coughs> and I put on my best, like, Prince Harry accent. <laughs> I love how he specifically chose Prince Harry. Right, that's Prince William. That's Prince William. Like, you know, we, we all know. We love Prince Harry. We love Prince Harry. Of course. Harry, like, baby, so we love him. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the problems stop. Like, there's no. I just say, sorry, excuse me. I, I don't understand. I'm, I'm not sure what you're saying. I said, oh, oh, no problem. <laughs> but if you were, even but if you were I was, African, but if you were African where you didn't speak English, yeah, yeah, it's really different. You know, it's just. It's you know, this is the same thing that you bring this up because I was I'm friends with Les Nubians, and they told me when I came to France. You speak French with Africans and you speak English with whites. Mm. Mm. And I was like, ah, oh, that's terrible. And they were right. Mm. Because my accent is not a great French accent. It has an African vibe to it. And people will see me and hear me and think I'm African. Mm. And treat me a certain way. And I feel it in my spirit. Mm. And immediately I'm like, excuse me. And they change. Like, oh, vous êtes Américaine? Yeah, yeah. It's too tard. It's too late. Yeah. And I'm calling all kinds of curse words. Like, you racist, blah, 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 blah. And they don't care. They don't care. They don't care. Because I'm American. I get it. Anybody else have had that experience before? Oh, I've had a hundred percent. Okay, tell me. Experience. So tell me. But it's because I spoke French when I got here. Mm. And I speak French with a French accent. Nice. Because you translate, so that's right. Brilliant. So my accent is one that was specifically curated to be Parisian. Mm. Fabulous. And it's a very strange experience. A existing in a place where like I've spent twenty two years of my life being black and now all of a sudden people keep trying to convince me that I'm mixed and I'm like, ah! <laughs> Oh, that's another topic. You see? Oh, I told you, David, yeah. I don't have to make a list. <laughs> they just come up. <laughs> that's and I'm just like, you're not about to tell me like you're not about to tell me I'm not black, right. Yeah. So there's the issue of a People see me and assume that I'm one thing that I'm not. Mm -hmm. People see me and they assume that I have one French parent and one African parent. 
Right. One white French parent. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then they hear me and assume that I'm from Paris. And then have to ask me where I'm from, and I'm like, because they're trying to ask me why I'm brown. There's always the question. Right. 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 Yeah. Where are you from? You can't ask that. Why are you brown? <laughs> right. Why I can't ask that. Right. It's, the, it's the where are you from? No, where are you really from? No. Yeah. Just, just, and <laughs> it's the me having to tell them no, I'm American. And the immediate confusion Confused. that happens, <laughs> right? <laughs> because there's all of these assumptions that were made when they first saw me and when they first heard me, yeah. that are now out of the window. Because there's the a you don't look American, which don't make no sense. B you don't sound American, <laughs> which makes more sense. <laughs> right. Like I'll give you the I don't sound American. Right. Exactly. American <laughs> for right now. Yeah. yeah. But like <laughs> the you don't look American. I'm like, what does that mean though? <laughs> So it's always a very strange situation of like, I immediately will speak French to people and they kind of just assume that I'm French until either I say a word where I still kind of have an American accent or I mention not being from here, right? And having to explain, no, I'm American. And then there's the questions of like, but you don't look American. Right. Where in the States How do you speak from? French so well? Why do you speak why French? You speak French? Right. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? <laughs> why? No, it's the why. Yeah. It's the why. It's why. 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 I get the immediate, so like I'll tell people, I'm like, oh, I'm American. And then they bug for a second and they're like, New Orleans. And I'm like, no. <laughs> New, <laughs> New Orleans. Orleans. First city. Because they're like the only <laughs> place in the United States where you could possibly be from right. and maybe speak French. Right, 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 right. right. No, no, no. Wow. I don't speak French. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> right, wow. and the, they're like, do you have any, does, who else in your family speaks French? I'm like, it's, it's literally French. just me. <laughs> I'm the only one. Yeah. My family looks at me like I'm crazy most of right. the time. Right, everyone else is unilingual. <laughs> right. <laughs> and there's just a lot of, it's, there's a lot of immediate questions, and it's very interesting. Like I said, there's the issue of, I tell them I'm American, and that completely screws up their vision yeah. of like you have one African parent, you have one French right. parent, you were born in Paris and raised in Paris, and that's why you speak like this, and that explains why you look like this and why you talk like this, and now that's out the window. It's, yeah, it, like whenever I meet someone, I know that like within an hour there's going to be this whole like I got to give you my whole like rundown wow. <laughs> of like who I am and why I'm here and what's happening. As a as a light skinned black woman, hmm. have you dealt with as much racism here? I'm, or, shoot. Well, I'm so obvious, question. overt. As, no, 100% no, but it's not even, I don't even think it's, I'm from a, a place where, like, I'm from backwoods, like, mountains, Virginia, mm. and, like, Let's see from. I'm from Waynesboro. Okay. And so it's, I've been, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Waynesboro! Mm -hmm. I love Waynesboro. My whole family's from Waynesboro. But also, I'm from backwoods, mountains, Virginia, and we know it well. So it's like, in terms of overt racism, like, no. It just doesn't compare. Right, like yeah. at no point is anyone gonna point a rifle at me because I'm black. Mm -hmm. Which is something that would happen in Backwoods Mountains, Virginia, but would not happen in Paris, France. Like but what about well, harassment the police or stuff like that? No, because in terms, anytime I've ever been stopped by the police, it's just because like I'm in a big group of people that are all moving at the same mm -hmm. time, and it's just like everyone's checking IDs and I'm here. Mm -hmm. And then there's the exact same situation of they stop me assuming that I have one African parent and one white French parent, mm -hmm. and then I hand them a card de séjour <laughs> that says that I'm American right. and they just. Kind of but but don't be fooled too, because I've been to the Bolivia in some neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and the police will shoot you. Right. Yeah. No, of course. And so like, <laughs> there's this in your face. There's just this <laughs> confusion that comes with me as a person. Right. That is both because I apparently don't look like the stereotypical American, American girl yeah. in Paris. Whatever that is. And yeah. also the yeah. fact that people don't know I'm American when they meet me. They can't hear that, and right. they can't see right. that. Right, right, right. Yeah. And tell me, Melissa, your experience with, because you were going to say something also. Um, I was going to say, um, when Daniel spoke about the, the hyphenating, so I identify in the United States as Haitian American. That's and, right. And I do say that because I was raised by Haitian parents, but born in America. So I'm too Haitian to be Amer completely American and too American to be completely Haitian. Mm -hmm. So I am that. But I know I was talking to my friend here, Steve K. Uh, we should have Steve on camera. Oh, Steve is coming on camera. That's yeah, the second. That's the third. That's the third. He'll bring some texture and some provenance <laughs> since we're, as he said in the pause, destroying his country. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, guys, Steve is off camera. He's he's filming, but Steve is a brilliant director here in Paris, and he does a fabulous festival, which is 
how I met a lot of us here, and, and he'll come on camera to bring some texture and ambiance. But go ahead, I'm sorry. Melissa. So, and we were talking about like racism here, and how they will say, like I was in the, because I'm in a, a school, and they were saying, uh, they're like, how do you feel about South Cell? So South Cell, the people here describe it, they're like, that's the Bronx myth, like that's dangerous. I don't know about the Bronx, I'm not from there, I don't oh, know yeah, what it's yeah, like. Yeah, they say it is. So they're like, that's the it's Bronx. Not. And they're like, but how can you say it's dangerous here? Like, you come from America where there's like guns and racism. <laughs> <Yo. laughs> the question about guns, we yeah. get it a lot and I can't say anything. Yeah, but they have guns here too. But I was like, yeah. but you guys are racist here too. And right. the teacher's white and he looked at me, so I'm like, okay, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> they, are, they, they are racist here. But I've also, what I'm saying about the hyphenation is like, I don't like that you can't acknowledge that you have another culture. Yeah. Like, Thank you're you. just French. But yeah. I'm like, well, I have really so many... Huh? That doesn't truly exist here anyways, because even with the black people, That's they're what... French, and then, but they press us about our origins because they have origins. So, right. like, mm -hmm. the French thing doesn't really work mm -hmm. with black people anyways, even though they yeah. put up an ambiance like that. It does. Yeah. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. But it's always mm -hmm. only white French people who are trying to be like, oh yes, no, but no, they're no, French. Yes. We're, we're French. We're French. No, 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 no. They take it on sometimes too, because if you ask them what they are, sometimes they're like, well, I'm French. French. And it's like, but I'm American. And they're like, oh, okay, well, these are my origins too. Right. Like, Okay. <laughs> well, that's her point too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of like white French people trying to be like, no, we're all French. Mm -hmm. We're all French here. That's it. We only have French here. Mm -hmm. yeah, Especially right. with yeah, like the yeah, but world we're like, cup. how do they say it's all French? So when there's, there's no one. There's no one who represents black people in the government. There's no right. black people on TV. Right. So the like so, perfect so, example was when France won yeah. the World Cup. Yeah. 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 That was a mess. That was a mess. Yeah. Was black. And everyone on this team is black. Exactly. Yeah, and so somebody, was, somebody made it when they won though. Yeah. 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 When you talking about when they won or when they lost last year? No, when they won. No, when they won. And somebody, and I think it was like Trevor Noah who made it. Yeah, yeah. He was brilliant. Like so, Africa also won the World Cup. Like, yeah. And so France was uh, up in arms, like, no, they're French. They are French mm -hmm. citizenship, they are French, and they are nothing else. And it's like, no, And then when they lost last year, or this year, there was a big, big soccer right. game. Right, and it was, game, and everyone was mad at and they um, called them Mbappe. Yeah, they called them the N word yeah. yeah. and all kinds of things. Yeah. It's yeah. terrible. That happened in England, too. And I'm like, yeah, that really? Because yeah. 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 when England lost at the last minute, and I was mad because I was rooting for England, because that was who I was betting on in my office pool. But like, but it's like when that guy who scale the building to save yeah. the child. Yeah. Yeah. He got his paper the next yes. day. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 And you know, like, this is a positive for France. And like, during the pandemic, um, they gave the nurses who were immigrants yeah, they gave full them, citizenship. Yes. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. Yeah. If, you were, if you were a teacher yeah. or like a, a, yeah. an essential worker and you were waiting for your papers, there was a kind of fast procedure track. that you could go really? through yeah. to wow. fast track the... I yeah. so surprised at that. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I also somehow managed yeah. to benefit from that in terms of my visa. I don't know what happened. I couldn't. I was teaching during the pandemic and I couldn't Yo. do it. Yeah. Oh, wow. I had, so I don't know what happened. I don't know if just the lawyer at work was like, on it. it yeah and she probably was knowing her but like even our higher-ups because the agency that I work for was recently purchased by one of the large like real estate conglomerates mm -hmm. in France mm -hmm. and even their lawyers were trying to hire like foreigners and couldn't get their papers accepted they all got refused and I was the only foreign person who needed a visa who got accepted during the pandemic Wow mm -hmm. Ben racism we're gonna say something too <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, when he was that talking was about um, what, how he's treated differently, they mm. see him, and then when he speaks English, his best prince. Oh, right, right, right. And the best prince Harry. Yeah. Right, right. So I was right, asking, right. do you all have other? If you don't, oh, right, I can right. just move to the. Oh language. no, it's actually, you know. So I'm born in Nigeria, and mm -hmm. I, but I was I grew up in England, and so like the first half of my life, ten years, I spent all around Africa, mm -hmm. and until you get to England. I wasn't black, I was just, I, mean, I just, just was. I yeah, was, I just, it was just you, uh, right? Yeah. And then I got to England, sure age 10, yeah. and then all of a sudden I'm black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like you spent most of your life in, and I'm glad that my identity was formed that way. already. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brilliant. Compared to yeah. like my little sister, for example, who yeah. only spent four and a half years right. in, in Africa. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Right. And it definitely grounds me a lot more in my self-esteem and resiliency against racism. What is your experience? Pretty much, pretty much the same, right? So I left Nigeria when I was 
I was born and raised in Nigeria till yeah. I was 15 yeah. or 16. Yeah. I moved to England. And of course, I was just me. Just yeah, like yeah, you. Yeah, I was yeah. just me. But then I got to England and then, you know, I started to realize, okay, there's something else in yeah. this world apart from just me being me. Yeah. Right? Mm. And um, it was... It took less than a couple of months for me to realize, okay, you have to, you know, like step up your game and mm -hmm. make these people realize, you know, yeah. you've got something in you. You're not just, mm -hmm. you know, another random black dude that's yeah. come, trying to come and take advantage of the, you know, mm -hmm. the, all that stuff. The story yeah. I was going to tell you mm -hmm. was actually, it's a silly story. It was mm -hmm. on the basketball court because I play basketball. So, um... I go to play basketball and I'm normally I hadn't played in a while so I just go and shoot shoot around just try to get my fitness back before I really start playing and so one day these kids on the playground you know they wanted they needed someone to complete the team and they mm. came to me and they're like uh, you know they sent some dude from um, Ivory Coast right one they sent the, the token black yeah, to ask they, <laughs> They sent the one black guy to go and ask me, and and the funny thing was he couldn't even really speak English that well, right? His English was very broken, but I could I could understand what he what he was trying to say. So I'm like, cool. So I went there and you know we started playing, and they all assumed just from hearing me talk, they all assumed I was American. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't say it to me, but you know I could hear oh American, American, blah blah blah, <laughs> oh American, and then. I told them um, I'm Nigerian and they were all shocked. <laughs> they were like, you're from Nigeria? Are mm -hmm. you sure you're from Nigeria? And Yo, I hate that. The I can tell sure. them. Yes. Yeah. Like, am I sure? Like, I'm telling you. And you <laughs> try to ask me, am I sure? And I can tell you, they put me on a pedestal when, wow. when they thought I was American. Can I cut you in here really quickly? Go ahead. Why do you think Amer Why do you think French people, especially French people who hate America yeah. and hate Americans, and find us loud and all kinds of things. You know what I'm saying? And we're this and we're that. Why do they get enamored by Americans? That's what they say. But Why? Deep down, they like deep us. down, they love what America is about. Yes. And you can't. So they say start. that, but deep down. But deep down, they do. Like America has influenced Everything more of the world than any other country. And not only America, any other place. Black America. Black yeah. America. Black, yeah. Black, yeah. Black, Black America. Let's be more specific. Black female. It hey, 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 slow your roll, baby. She got him Black America has, has influenced yeah. more oh of the world God. than anything else. Yeah? Yes. If you see, if you you see the little kids, if you music. see the kids, the, the music, music dancing, the movies, dancing, you know, the clothes, oh. the clothes. Yes. They all want to be like the talk, the, and that, the way yeah. they move. Oh, they want to be like yeah. yeah. relax, 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 relax. As, as the European. The yeah. Wait, hold on. Tell us, uh, Kamara. Oh, let me let me okay. finish that story. Just, right? Yeah, then then Kamara. Um, so uh, what did I? Even, yeah. So yeah. they put me on a pedestal yes. when they thought I was American, right? To the to the point that there's there's this there's two girls. Yes. Who <laughs> who came on? Who were on the court that day? Till today. They still call my phone trying to get me to, you know, do whatever it is they want to do. I don't know what it is, right? <laughs> but yes. as soon as as soon as I was Nigerian, right, one of them just wasn't into it no more. Yeah, we can't do it nothing no more. <laughs> and um, even even with the dudes, wow. you could tell that you know their their attitudes were a little bit different. You know, just knowing that just not that like he's energy. Not American, yeah, no, the energy, no, no, the energy shifts and I could feel it. So it was a bit, you know, it was a bit weird. But I mean, I kind of got, I'm, I'm immune to that shit. You know, being yeah. excuse my friend. It's okay. Being, excuse <laughs> my channel. <laughs> I love it. Express yourself. You know, awesome. being, being okay. in England for so long yeah. and you know sense. going through that. So. So. What were you saying, Kamaria? Tell us. Um, just the influence that I see of black culture. Like, even when I go out, last night, um, I went out with a friend. Um, and she's American. She's a black American girl. She lives in Dijon, actually. She's studying, like, wine and stuff. But she's a friend of my sister's. So she went to Gremlin with my sister's. Mm -hmm. And we went to this place, went to 9-11. And just when we walked in there, we saw, like, these little girls. And, I mean, I think it was little because they look little. All right. little. And no. it was just, like... <laughs> You know, no way. Like, they're, 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 they're,
middle Were they black or were they white? Okay, two of them was white, one no. of them was black. And just trying to twerk and stuff, and then we were just fascinated. <laughs> black, but it's not because black women didn't invent twerking. Gosh, I was like, "What is this?" Like this was like, and it's like, I like, should be kind of flattered because I get what they're trying no, to like imitate, but this is not it. Especially, right, on, yeah. especially when you do a porn on them. Mike said twerking. It was Mike. You twerk. Mike, you twerk. We could twerk. Uh oh. Right, right. Damien, can you do you want to share that story you were telling about to me with the police officers here in France? Ooh. So black privilege did not yeah. work in my favor at all. Okay, <laughs> with my best princess English, they oh, did not. Wow. The American privilege didn't work for you? No. Really? Oh. No. With the cops? Not at all. No, they were like handed over fifty euros, miss. Oh, <laughs> oh, fifty euros. Oh, was it when you were trying to leave the train station? <laughs> no, I had a ticket and the machine wasn't validating it. Oh, so they yeah. were like they're strict with that. 50 euros, yeah, yes, we don't care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I will say being American um, allots us a certain amount of privilege, whether you be black or white here mm -hmm. in Paris. Um, I know that, you know, just being here, I will get treated better than my black African brothers and sisters mm -hmm. off the gate. And it's unfortunate, you know, that that happens, but I knew it was coming in. Um, I think America does have, like, a lot of interesting influence on the world, like mm -hmm. you said earlier. But with the policemen, um, you know, it's, it's kind of weird because, you know, you see how they treat the Africans and the North African and the Arab people here. And it's like, wow. <laughs> like, it's like, I, 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 you know, just doing my research before I moved there, you know, I kind of knew what to expect, but I just was waiting to see it actually happen. Mm -hmm. And so, just being like at Gardenau, just trying to take a train and see how, like, even at some train stations outside of uh, the city, you see the police officers, they just basically have a person like blocked in against the wall. And mm -hmm. it's like, wow, is that like really necessary to be mm -hmm. that close and just have someone mm -hmm. blocked in like that? Um, in terms of racism, I think that they just don't want to call it what it is. Mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> and yeah. so like when you challenge <clears throat> them on that, they don't know what to do because I think that the black people here are not as aggressive or and outspoken mm -hmm. and unified. Unified, as unified as black Americans are. Mm -hmm. um, or even across the pond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you think in England, black people are oh, yeah, more unified? Sure. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. by far. oh really? Because yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah definitely. For sure. yeah. Okay. And, and so, like, my running with the police at Gordano was more or less, I was trying to get out. Of course, I'm not familiar with the metro system and whatever. Mm -hmm. with of the course. Paper tickets. So I, I got in, I threw my ticket down. Oh. <laughs> so I didn't know you were supposed to keep Rule number it. one is you keep your ticket. Yeah. I didn't know that. And Me so, too. I didn't know it either. So, you know, I'm in Gordano, like, doo -doo -doo. I'm like, yo, how do I get out? Because <laughs> at my train station in my neighborhood, I just walk up and they open. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And so he was like, I walked up, walked up I walked past a group of policemen. Mm -hmm. I walked back. And I'm like, hey, I have a question. Like, how did you get out? Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. So you went and spoke to the police. That means you spoke in English. Speaking in English or French? English, yeah. Okay, that's good. That was a good move. That's yeah, and, cool. I'm, and, I'm, and I'm like, yo, how do I get out? I'm trying to get out. And, you know, you already know it's huge, so mm -hmm. you have to go through like maybe two or three mm -hmm. yeah. turnstiles just to get out. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, um, I threw out, I told him what happened. He was mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, oh, okay, I'll let you out. Mm -hmm. But then he was like, let me see your ID. And I was like, mm, what's that got to do with anything? Mm -hmm. So I gave him my ID. Because when I said, he asked me where I was from, I said, I just moved from New York. And so I, I showed him my ID, he gave it back to me, and then, like, 
I was in my head, that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Mm-hmm. So then that's when I started to question him. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so why did you ask to see my ID? No. Oh, no. Not in France. Homie. Not in France. Not in Paris. No. 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 He's, he was like, oh, you know, it's just a precaution because no, 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 no. And I'm like, but why did you ask to see my ID when I came up to you? Mm. To try to get out of yeah, you Gardena. were trying to sneak out. Yeah, it's not like it's not like yeah, it's not like I'm doing anything wrong. Right. If I was yeah. doing anything I wrong, come to, I would not have come up to you. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. If I'm being sneaky, exactly. Right. Right. Like, so he goes, "Oh, <laughs> we just have to check it." I said, "Like, nah, I don't like the fact that you asked me mm. to see my ID." And so he goes, no, 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 you know, you just like making it a lot more than what it is. And then I replied to him, am I? <laughs> and so at this point, I'm getting louder. And so people are looking at me at the turnstile, like, I don't understand why you asked me for my and identification. And speaking English too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good and so. And I, he, he's like, oh, no, 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 it's not like that. It's not like that. I'm like, it is like that. Mm. Why would you ask me for my ID? And I'm just trying to get out. I'm not sneaking in. I'm trying to get out. Mm-hmm. One, <laughs> two, went out and I explained to him what I saw visually. Like when I walked past you, you had a guy, a black guy against the wall. Mm. Right? You started holding him accountable. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You started holding yeah, him accountable. Yeah, yeah. I, went, I, went yeah. I went in. I went wow. in on him. Good for yeah. you. I went in on him. I said, when I walked past you guys, you had a black person against the wall. You're, I'm asking you to help me. You're asking me for your ID. Wow. <laughs> right now, you have a guy, a, a different black guy against the wall, mm-hmm. pressing him. Mm-hmm. So if it's not, you know, racism, then what is it? That's right. That's how you do American privilege. Okay. And, and, so, go ahead. and so, like, after that, he was like, he tried to give me, like, some kind of excuse, mm-hmm. but I was like, never mind. Yeah. Just let me out. That's right. <laughs> Get out of here. Like, even more yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know I kind of drew a proud when, like, I saw people in my peripheral just, like, wow. looking at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, like, you start you know, speaking English and you speak loud, the people yeah. will come around. Yeah. It's funny because, you know, they, have a, they were trying to pass a law here in France that you can't video cops. Uh-huh. Yeah, I heard about that. Yo, uh-huh. I'm the first. I see black uh-huh. boys on the street with cops. I'd be like, you all right? Do <laughs> <laughs> you need anything? Do you need me to stay here with you? And they're like... <laughs> <laughs> and the cops are like, oh fucking American. And I'm standing like, <laughs> I'm recording the whole thing. I'm like, what they here for? Why are they here? You know, and that's, why, and, that's, and that's what I told the police also. You know, like, you know, you're telling me it's, it's not one thing, but from what I see, mm-hmm. it is because you stopping all black guys. Mm-hmm. I told him to go and stop some white people. <laughs> <laughs> no, shit. Do it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. No, I was you know, like, it, it just frustrates me, you know, mm-hmm. coming from the U.S. and mm-hmm. everything that's going on at home. And mm-hmm. I moved here for a different quality of life. Wow. I, 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 it's similar, but at least I know I'm not going to have yeah, someone yeah. shoot me down. Right, right. 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 For nothing silly. silly. Yes. I know. Yes, or depending yes. on where you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here in Paris, though. No. Yeah. Hey, can y'all educate? I feel like I'm out the loop. Can you educate me on some things that have occurred in Bonniers with the cops and killing? Yes. I'm just, I'm just not hit. Steve, what is the name? Uh, you, can, you can talk off camera because they'll hear you. What is the name of the young man, Adama Traore? Oh, okay. Does yeah. someone, do you want to talk about that? Very very I don't know similar. everything. Yeah, I don't know everything, but he's essentially, uh, his sister, Isa uh, Traore, has been. Uh, Wow, the French English is yeah, you guys should be brilliant. Since 2016 he mm-hmm. he died and correct me if I'm wrong, he died while being uh, in police custody. Um, and I'm I don't want to say like what the injuries were cuz I don't want to speak incorrectly, but essentially she's been fighting so hard to get justice for him and there've been other um, most, mostly youths that have um, been have either have either died or been seriously injured in police custody Mm -hmm. so um yeah i mean police brutality is a thing that exists here but a lot of people in paris don't see it Mm -hmm. or don't pay attention and also 
But it's mainly France because it will happen in Paris proper. That, but also, I, I personally find, and you know, I've, I've asked about this before, but I find that there's a huge bystander culture here, mm -hmm. yeah. whereas in the U.S., like somebody's more likely to intervene. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, yeah. 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 And it's not just with racism; it's with like being a woman. Also, Sexism, have, rape. Yeah, I have harassment. There's no yeah, need to yeah. I personally experienced like with a friend who was coming from the U.S. Like she got in a fight with a man. Um, who did not expect for her to fight back, proud. Um, but, you know, she got in a fight with a, with a guy because uh, he touched her inappropriately, and she was like, oh, no, 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 like, I don't play that. And so, <laughs> because and she's know, this tiny, and, tiny and, you know, people can drink on the trains, drink on the streets, yeah. they have fête de la musique, they're drunk, and they're yeah. aggressive, and men yeah. will touch you. But the thing is, there were five guys, there were three girls, she's like a tiny, skinny, like, blonde girl, and then there's me, who's living here, and then there's her friend, who's, like, terrified, and I'm like, all right, well, I guess this is it. Like, <laughs> I guess this is it. I've never gotten into physical fight, but I was like, I can't, I can't, you know, it's just my friend. And so there's five guys, and none of them, and people are standing there and, like, watching the situation, and they're not doing anything, and the police are at the other end of the street. There's, like, yelling happening. I don't know how I managed to, like, uh, uh, so to 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 let out so many uh, insults. I didn't even know that I knew in French, and like nobody said anything. And then eventually, after I managed to like physically pick her up and pull her off of him, um, there was this couple that came and they were like, "Are you guys okay? Like I saw the whole thing. Like <laughs> the guy, the guy, was like, I saw. The guy the guy was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Do call the police. <laughs> but it's on. I don't know if you guys know near Bestie, uh, Rue de la mm. Yeah, it was there. Of course. Uh, mm. It's busy. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they requested to go. And, um, yeah, so there's a huge bystander culture here, and I think that's a part of it. People don't want to get involved, but that's very different from the U.S. So, like, when I was listening to you speak, and one of the things that was really, really, and is still really difficult to, to deal with is the fact that, like, as much as I want to like intervene and like say something and do something and my like Americanness, my United States, you know, growing up there, uh, I hate to say this, but like it doesn't function the same way here. It doesn't, and we have to accept that. Like, we cannot expect for people to react in the way that we know, and that's not. Fair. I wish it was like that because I feel like we have a more open spirit about a lot of things and this is also uh, anyway, I don't know a lot about British culture. My sister went to school there, so that's what I know um, but uh, Yeah, I can only speak to the United States and I feel like we So often expect for people to react in the same way that we do or handle things in the same way that we do and I personally think that we handle things like We don't get it right. It's not perfect, but it's open. It's out there. We're having conversations Conversations aren't happening yeah. here as much as they need to be. Uh, but you know, at the same time, and this is a positive for I feel like I'm a friend. Go, no, go for it. Oh, no, it says that this you bring some positive. Yeah, exactly. well, something that I love about France is that French people don't take shit from their government. That's yeah. true. This is fact. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. The, yeah. Which That's protest? Yeah, don't yeah. 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 protest in a second. Yeah. yeah. Compared to British culture, British culture, yeah. we're just we're more it's like okay, subdued, yeah. more compliant. We're bootleggers, really. Like, yeah. basically, basically. Really, basically. Exactly. I mean, I don't know, but. <laughs> French culture. No. Listen, anything. Every four seconds. Anything. Strike. You know, like. Strike. Yeah. Anything. Strike. Strike. Strikes yeah. will be on the street. Yeah. You know, when I was at the Black Lives Matter protest last year, oh, yeah. it was really cathartic for me. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Because I didn't expect such a turnout. Agreed. I was and a dumbest sister. Mm. Such a diverse turnout either. The first people I came across were these two short white women being like, Tu le monde détestes yeah, la police. You know, like, like, man, with, with what? vim, with like real vim, you know, and I was like, <laughs> like and right. I just kept on seeing that throughout the day. Anything, like anything that is not right, they will fuck shit up. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. And yeah. it's just, yeah. it's an alive, like, it's a very living democracy. Yeah. And, um, it's not perfect. It's, I feel like it's still like 10 years behind a lot of things in the UK or the US. Mm. But 10? No, we're still in 1920s. No. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's not like I that. Know, like, you know, 1885. That's how I feel. Uh, we're still in, I mean, we're still in Josephine Bacon days. Oh, yeah. You can't explain. Um,
kind of like drive. You can't explain it. That's the thing. Like, it's frustrating. Like, I will tell you how, that's why it took me so long to submit this thing because I was like, you know, there was so much of my opinions in it. But at the end of the day, like, as I was saying before, it's it's a completely different historical context. It's a completely yep. different mm-hmm. mentality. Like, we have to take that into account. I'm not saying to allow things to happen, but just keep that in mind. Like, you have to be strategic. Yeah. You have to be strategic. Mm-hmm. You can't just come in here like guns blazing. Mm-hmm. Like, I would love to. Um, mm, the term guns blazing. Very American. <laughs> very American. Very American. Very American. Very American. Very American. Very American. So when, I, yeah, what I'm saying is like, you have to be strategic. That's something that I've learned. Um, and uh, what's been encouraging also is the fact that like things are changing. Like my friends, I was very surprised at the amount of my friends that were like, I'm coming with you. Mm-hmm. Like I'm here by your side, holding mm-hmm. up the sign, screaming with you. Like I'm with you and, and, and some of my French friends as well. And so as much as like we talk about this issue, um, there is some positivity in the fact that the younger generations are like, no, we're not, mm, yeah. no, we're not, we're not for that. Right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does that answer your question, Kamari, about what, what you were asking? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it was specifically about the Bambia, like, uh, Yeah, because I think her brother was, that happens in Bambia, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yesterday, I was at the club, and I saw a shirt that I thought said, Black Lives Matter, until I took a second look, and it said, Bambia Lives Matter. Um. Ooh! And so that's why that, I want that, this shirt. So that was also some context behind, like, okay, I'm missing stuff, some context. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's why I asked. Because this like, is what I say to a lot of people, because being an artist here, a singer, I'm in studios in the Beaulieu mm-hmm. all the time. There was a studio that got shot up. Was it shot up, Steve? Or broken down with the cops, the black guy was in the studio. Oh, with the cops. Yeah. 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 It was disgusting. Yeah. 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 And I worked in that studio. I recorded that. It was an art studio? studio. Yeah, it was a recording yeah. studio. And yeah. there's a producer who got attacked by the police in his own studio. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that was that the... Me. It was it caught on camera down. because it was caught yeah. on the security cameras of yes. the studio. Yeah. And that was the reason that France tried to pass the law saying yes. you can't record yeah. 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 Imagine America trying to pass the law. They tried, though. They, they did. They did. They did. They did. They did. Like the Texas abortion law is about to be taken. Look, they tried. They tried anything. They tried. They tried. Think about Americans. We'll try anything. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's like the law here that we were we were having lunch dinner the other day with at your party with Yasmin. Mm -hmm. And to do her visa shot, she She has to take take off her her job. That is that would not. Imagine the states. The Muslims have got to take off their hijabs. Do what? Take off? Do what? Nope. I mean, the first time I saw. So I used to, in order to get to my university, I had to take the bus, and I would. One of the stops on the bus was like the major high school. And the first time I saw like Muslim girls wearing a hijab on the bus and having to take it off to walk into school. Just. It's crazy. Uh, To go into school. To walk into school, they they would have they so they would leave the school and they'd put the hijab on and then they go about their life like in the city and then when they went back to school like after their lunch break they had to take it off and I was shut I mean French they don't don't pretend to like nah they don't just just pretend they did that's crazy crazy. nah and that's it yeah but Americans we don't pretend to love Muslims either Muslims take the hijab off right they were like look we all like y'all but wear the scarf if you want to right whereas in France they were like no 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 we don't like you and you gotta take it off that's right this is what states here and the reasoning is like because we feel like it's something that's suppressing your freedom. Yeah, they, exactly. They, they don't know yeah. any better. Like, we they feel like themselves. this is suppressing your freedom, suppressing so we don't take away your freedom to That's right. To <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, you can take it off. But as long as long <laughs> women so taking a visa picture, like where does consent come in at that point? Because at the university, you're still not allowed to wear it when you are a consenting adult. So how can you not be able to At a cheat? university, I think you're allowed to wear it because you are an adult. Mm-hmm. And I think the rule is that you like you can't impose that on a child. Oh. Okay. Okay, so is, the, is it specifically that, like the it's age specifically difference? Specifically the age difference. Okay, yeah. but then mm. how can you still hold that to, on adults, like as far as their visa? It, even in a professional environment, you're not supposed to visibly show signs of religion. Yeah. Really? That's yeah. Like, yeah. But you can visibly show signs of your personality that are unwanted because you guys have these permanent contracts. So you guys show your butt. <laughs> yeah, show out like in professional environments. French people definitely like show out because you guys have this like professional. I mean, these permanent contracts, so it's like really hard to get fired. Yeah. And I've heard this multiple times, so it's like you can show those parts of yourselves, but God forbid you show some religion. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, that's wild. It's it's, it's because I think. Uh, do you guys know like you you know what universalism? Mm-hmm. Is yeah, that's their that's their like mo here. Mm-hmm. Like we are a universal country. We're all. 
French yeah. and, and we're it. all equal and, and we all have the same social opportunities and that is it. And that is and that's not true. true. Cool. It's it's totally BS. Your piece is new. When I see that egalite yeah. fraternity, oh yeah. my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to shoot yeah. that anywhere I say I just want to shoot exactly. it. Up. Like, that's Yo. the complete opposite of what it is. Exactly. Yeah. But I wanna I wanna talk to Kamari a little bit about the life of an artist here. Mm. Just as an artist myself, and how life here affects your artistry. Um, I think it's very inspiring. Like there's inspiration everywhere, and there's accessibility to all types of inspiration because there's constantly exhibit and there's an exaltation of art in general in the French culture. Even though mm -hmm. so, like yo yo, we like art. You know, it's it's ingrained in their culture. But as far as uh, artists being rewarded or even compensated for the amount of either effort or qualifications they have, etc. Like it's not celebrated here. It's not easily accessible here. And it could be also tied into that they don't have the same hustle culture as America because in America, any talent you have can turn into an income mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that I'm t I was talking to photographers and they're like, he had so many photographers here, same in America. But it's so hard to make money here. It's so hard to be compensated here. Why? Like, why? This is a place that where the, like inspiration lives on the street, and it, there's just such a, celebra a celebration of artistic culture, but they don't want to compensate the artist. Why? Because it's oversaturated? Or right. And have you felt inspired here with your own photography? I felt inspired, but because of my negative uh, <laughs> experience as an au pair. That we have you want to talk a little bit about that? A little bit? You want to talk a little bit? Yeah. Because I'm sure someone could be watching and be like, I'm going to go to France as an au pair. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anything you want to share? One piece of advice? Yeah, I definitely will share. But since because of my negative experience, I haven't been able to basically, you know, manifest any of my inspiration into some of the work because, like, I, I get inspired and I'm like, oh, I don't like that. Now. And I'm just like overwhelmed with negative. And sometimes, as a creative, you have to let your creativity mm -hmm. breathe mm -hmm. and then manifest into itself. Mm -hmm. And it takes effort too. Like a lot of artists, it's just not oh, I'm inspired and it, it happens. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of effort that goes into creating. But, okay, if you are thinking about coming to France as an au pair, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I, I really don't think it's worth it if you are educated. Mm. If you, that's mainly it. Like, if you're educated, you've lived in the real world, you've touched real money, mm. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth it. It's a really easy visa to get. It's a, an insanely easy visa to get, but it's 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 contained to being an au pair visa. You can't come here, get an au pair visa, and like, oh yeah, like I'm gonna work something else because the au pair job didn't work out. No, you have an au pair visa. Mm. That is on your That's visa. It. That is what you do, unless you wanna try to go back and switch it and all these other things or maybe you know become a student and then you can work that way but as far as someone like I said I, I have an education I'm not necessarily passionate about this um, and it made me feel like okay everything that glitters is not gold like these people are crazy these parents are, are nuts God bless their hearts but it's a different mentality you know different it's definitely a different space. mentality and they take advantage of people most definitely. I worked for a family in the 16th Arondisma. You say 16th Arondisma in France, people are like, ooh. ooh. Yeah. Yo, so 16th got money. And they have crazy people as well. With the then there's crazy people <laughs> who got money. And they need to understand that, like, okay, just because, you know, you have money does not mean that you can treat the people that work for you, okay? Yeah. Not your children, because I have to settle with you. I, I do not work for you. I work for your parents. Mm -hmm. But the fact that these children are so ingrained with the... The, the mentality that I am their servant was beyond me and I was like, I am not the one or the two, I like, stop it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so unless you really love children, unless you want to do something with that, or if you are young, you haven't gone to university yet, you're 18 or 19 and you're taking a gap year, which most people don't do in America. Mm -hmm. Like when we graduate high school, our gap year is taking classes at a community college in order to transfer mm -hmm. to university. <laughs> That's right. You know, or our, 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 you know, your, your yeah. space in between high school and real university, or maybe you just go from high school to a trade school. We don't think to travel the world for a year or two and then go to university. So if you are young and you might not be ready for university yet, of course I would encourage you to do that. That is, it's an easy way. 
you you're a broke high school student. You haven't touched no money yet, so you don't really you know. You don't know. You don't know yet. So you can, and you might need to live. With, you you're used to living with a family, so that's an easy transition if you have to leave the family. Like especially young black kids, and you don't know what next step you have. Of course, being no pair, this is babysitting basically. It's glorified babysitting. Do that, but if you already been through the university thing, if you've already worked the job, it is not worth it. It's not a good idea. It will ma- it's a very humbling thing. I'm learning to really steward <laughs> the season I'm in, amen? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Learn to steward the season I'm in, amen? Amen. 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 But it's very humbling. But beyond that, yeah, it's not worth it. Just Great. Well, I, guys, listen to what Kamara is saying. She's experiencing it. So listen, listen, listen. Let's talk about Matisse. Oh, no. Uh, no. Because in the States, no. you know, Meghan Markle is She's black, Halle Berry is black, <laughs> Barack Obama is black. Everyone's like, black. there's no black. Like, black. Like, Everyone's black. Like, Matisse. No. What is that? Actually, that's that's what that's you I don't so understand the whole Matisse thing. Can someone hear. explain that? Uh, <laughs> well, she won't be cis. You got it. Are you biracial? No. Okay. But they, my parents are black. But they would think you're Matisse, really right? right? But they would think you're Matisse, right? Yeah, they would uh-huh. call me Matisse. In America, you black like me, child. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sure. And that's what like you have to ask. Like yeah. I have to ask because in America, you don't know. Like, you can look like you and have two black parents. So that's yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah. are you? But exactly. you're not. So when somebody told well, the first time I was ever serenaded by a man was a white <laughs> French man. Oh, <laughs> so great. This is relevant. This is relevant. This is relevant. This is relevant, I promise. Um, and he song. sang this song that unfortunately is really catchy, but <laughs> it's called Melissa by Julien Clerc, and it's Melissa. like Melissa Matisse de Visa. So oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I say Matisse. Wow. tu peux pointu. So like her boobs are really like yeah, you know perky, yeah. and so he's sexualizing this woman. And I was like, when I first heard it, I was like, oh my god, French. <laughs> <laughs> Until, Until I yeah. understood the lyrics, and I was like, mm, right. And I was like, what is a Métis? And I asked my host mom, and she was like, why are you asking? So I told her the situation, and she was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. So basically, it's just like when, you have, when you're a lighter-skinned black person. Mm. They assume that you have one white parent and mm. one mm. black parent. Which is not my case personally, but oh because yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been told I was Matisse too, and I almost spat in that person. <laughs> but also Me, Matisse. <laughs> but no, but also when I went to Cote d'Ivoire and Mali, they weren't like you're black. They were like no, you're they white, were like, yeah. and I was like, no, of course. Huh? You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I was like, oh, they say Claire. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Claire. They, they told me I was white, and I was like, I'm really confused. <laughs> I was like, okay. But no, I mean here it's uh, yeah, like you have to be mixed with something, and and it's and it's um, it's very much so uh, glorified. Glorified. Yeah, there's another thing. Privilege I don't get that. that. Yeah, I mean, there's well, a privilege why, that though? comes with that. But it's approximate to whiteness. That's yeah, exactly. There it's approximate to whiteness, and that's why I feel like weird. I yeah. haven't experienced as much overt or any honestly racism because people look at me and they say Matisse and even it happened in church one time like and she just says it so matter of factly because they know they're not going to mm-hmm. ask you because <laughs> right yeah. it is a declaration yeah. it was well, not well, a know this that in this America like sentence. when Mariah Carey said she was Matisse it was over right <laughs> like, Barack Obama can't be like yeah I'm Matisse yeah. that's what happened <laughs> Not because they're black, but it's also in America, they created the one drop rule. Yes, so that's yeah. conditioned yeah. us to see yeah. blackness yeah. first. Black we black see black. blackness first. We don't see yeah. mixedness. It doesn't yeah. like you might be mixed, but you're still black. Yeah, you're black. black. Like, even if you are, but you're still black. Exactly. Yeah, you are black. Yeah. Barack Obama is the first black president. Yeah. He's not a white mama. Yeah, yeah. yeah. was raised He's by black. white people. But yeah. I think I think the approxi- <laughs> of, like the approximation of whiteness is what glorifies it, and yeah. that's why it's like, oh, you must be, or they say it to you as if it's a compliment, uh-huh. and. Really? It's not because that's just a mislabel. Yeah. This is not what I am. Right. So like, like I've spent ask? twenty, <laughs> like I've spent twenty-two years of my life being black, and you're not about to tell me now that I'm mixed. <laughs> yeah. Especially because I just met you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or people will try, like it's not it's that it's not a question. Mm-hmm. But no one's thing, asking me if I'm mixed. So the thing They're is, like if you me. if you ask somebody here who is actually like mixed or they hear the word mitis, some of the things that we find offensive. Well, here do not buy no, offensive. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like what? Yeah. Like Matisse. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Some people don't necessarily yeah. buy offensive. And when you tell them Matisse that they black, they're like, no, I'm not. Yeah. Oh, I have an experience. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, like, I'm like, how are you not black? One of your parents is black. No, no, but I'm not black. black. I'm Matisse. Yeah. yeah. Black, right. Like, no. to th- because to them, like, Matisse is this 
other category that's not necessarily related to one or the other. It's just their category. In their mind, it's something else. Whereas to us, it's it's Right, and so so because it's this other category here, and it's not another category in the States, like you're mixed, but you're black, and that's just kind of how that works. Like being mixed is a subcategory of being black. Yeah, and that's the thing. We have so much pride associated with our blackness, and that's why it's almost like a... Like, like, why are you doing that? So like, why are you trying to put that yeah. on me? Right. You know, yes. like, Say it out. I'm a black woman. No, no I'm, a, yes. I'm yeah. a proud right. black woman. Don't put that on me, even right. though it's not necessarily, it's not too much of an insult, honestly. But it's, it's just like, it's just wrong. It's not an insult, it's, it's just not wrong. what I am. Like, uh-huh. and it's this and, but they can say that Matisse all they want. Look at Meghan Markle. She was shocked in the UK about the racism. Mm-hmm. Really? Oh, yeah. 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 She looked like she white. I understand. And she's, people, they still know. They're like, no, no, no. Treat her like she black, and her mother. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But no, Tell like, you're, you're queen, you're, you're, you know. <laughs> you're queen. You're <laughs> queen. You're queen. You're queen. See, in that regard, I'm your bad. Yeah, you're a bad. Yeah, you're a bad. My lineage goes to Ondo. Oh, so like, shit. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, she's your queen. Um, <laughs> Racism in England is different, mm-hmm. you know. But it does exist. Just, it, of course, oh, yeah. Of course yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But like, it's not overt. Like, it's just, it's just impolite. You, you wouldn't yeah. do it. <laughs> like the questions are like, "Quel est ton origine?" Yeah. Like in a professional setting, I was shocked. I was like, "Why would you?" Ask How you? you? Mm-hmm. I, I was in a business meeting. I just got back from South Africa. And we're talking about a project. I was like, "Oh, is that where you're from?" And I was like, mm-hmm. "What? What does this have to do mm-hmm. with anything? Anything? Like what?" <laughs> And I just said no, I'm carried on, and you're still like, what? Yeah. You know, it's just not questions like that are just not asked mm. in a professional setting or even on a first run. Right. You just don't it's ask these. It's just rude. It's just impolite. It's just not mm. British. It's just not British. But no, yeah. I don't want to like racism does exist. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, My girl is here. So I want to make sure we hear first who's speaking. Daniel was speaking, yes? Mm-hmm. yes. Well, no, well, I was concluding, I was just saying, you know, racism for sure exists in England too. And yeah, the Meghan Markle thing definitely emphasized it. Um, but you know, it's also, it's also a class thing, mm-hmm. right. you know? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Meghan saying she didn't research into the royal family, I was like, come on, mm-hmm. shit. come on. Like, that's the, the class system in England is ingrained, it's just, it's just there, it's just very present. Yeah. Um, the wealth is concentrated, not not as visible as it is here. In Paris, mm. it's very obvious mm-hmm. what the class is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. In England, it's just more hidden. It's no, mm-hmm. it's just more there. Do we have classes in America? 100%. Yeah. yeah. Do we? But you have the ability to it. defy it a lot of times, mm-hmm. I feel like, due to like, capitalism, consumerism. Well, yeah, right. Like, the thing about you can, right. Because I'm because you can be immigrant, gay, okay. yeah. yeah. black. Yeah. Poor, uneducated, and be a million. Yeah, yeah. 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 So can buy it. But that's not possible here in France. Really? Yeah. It's harder. It's harder. I mean, in France, France you have to have a name. They passed a law that mm-hmm. people can't discriminate against your name. Yeah. Because if your name is too Muslim, but passing, you passing a law don't mean nothing. How do you? It doesn't mean anything. It don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing. Materialize that. Yeah. Because who's checking that? Exactly. But for me, like you were saying earlier, the French love to say no. Everything is limited. Everything. It's impossible. It's, it's impossible. impossible. It's impossible. Yeah. It's never possible. Can we talk a little bit about romance and then we're done? Steve, do you want to say anything before we get into romance? Steve, do you want to come on camera and say anything? Steve can talk about Guys, romance. Guys, say something, Steve, so they can hear you off camera. They can hear you. Is there something you want to say? Based um, on what okay. You- is there anything you want to say? <laughs> That's all you want anything to say you want to say about what you're hearing about what we're talking about? Maybe give some explanation about why France is the way they are. Why aren't black people here unified? Why aren't the Africans unified here? Why aren't they going against the French system? That's a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> you might ask too many questions. So I can thing. answer a lot of them, but maybe after. We're gonna bring Steve in. Steve, Steve come, come, please. Steve okay. can take my place. Steve, you're not moving. Steve, come right here. Steve, come right here. No, come, 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 come. Yeah. Come, come, come. Yeah. No. Yeah, come, come. Well, maybe move maybe this way so that. Me. Oh, okay. So that <coughs> can he or he can oh. come here or he can sit here. Welcome, Steve. Answer one of my questions. Can you see Steve? Do you have Steve? Have Let's give Steve a round of applause. Yes. Let's give y'all a lot of applause. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
John is back there, the battery's gonna die anyway. Go <laughs> Answer one of the questions. One of them. Which one? Which um, one was the most pressing that you saw? Uh, I could give great clarification to that one. A lot. Oh. <laughs> Pick one. What bothered you the most among the negative things we said? What bothered you the most? Yeah. You don't like my country. <laughs> <laughs> I like why why do you like, think No, yeah, you like my country. It's my country. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I am unbiased. He's European. <laughs> yeah, he's like European. he's European. No, I understand what you guys feeling. It's not easy. I talk a lot about that with me this mm -hmm. Um but um, I could give a lot of explanation that I don't want to mm -hmm. because I don't want to give uh, excuse mm -hmm. to my people mm -hmm. here in France mm -hmm. because how they behave, mm -hmm. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I like France, I like Paris, mm -hmm. I don't like so much people here in France. Mm -hmm. so. We're listening, we're listening. You're, you're <laughs> French. He's, like, he's Parisian, he was born here, so we're gonna listen because he's giving texture and, 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 and understanding as us expats of how do we live here in France. Let's talk about so the whole... So, for example, the Métis thing. Mm. Uh, on a, I'm going to speak French. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. You understand French. Yeah, so, I'll, just, I'll just have to translate. Except the subtitles. Why do you keep dying? Leave change. You're bothering David? Dang. He was bothering you? Oh, thank you. Shame. No, en ce qui concerne, par exemple, euh, les métis. Mm -hmm. euh, comme vous l'avez dit, nous en France, les Noirs, mm -hmm. on a grandi avec la culture américaine. Mm -hmm. So black French people here grew up with the American mm -hmm. culture? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yep. C'est tout ce qu'on avait comme représentation de nous-mêmes à la télé. Wow. Musicalement également. Mm -hmm. So it's like the oui. Afro trap and voilà. the Afro stuff is coming from trap in America. Voilà. Yeah. Donc, à partir de là, nos standards de beauté mm. viennent aussi des États-Unis. Mm -hmm. Wow! Mm -hmm. So it's not European identification of beauty, it's no. the American identification mm -hmm. of beauty. I'm speaking to an English, so mm -hmm. they understand. Donc, euh, quand on regarde la télé, qu'on voit euh, Camaria, oui. mm -hmm. Samantha, Light skin women, mm -hmm. right? Her, Mike. Mike. <laughs> I know. It's yeah. a I, I, I'm darker than the, you know, the 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 the, the paper bag. So I would. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would be the other side. I'd be a Delta. We'd be Deltas. <laughs> They'd be AKs. Okay, first of all, hang <laughs> on. The Delta. The Delta. I tell you, I pledge Delta. I tell you about that. Yeah. And the whole thing. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Right. The one Delta. Because I was pledge Delta. Donc quand on voit ça à la télé, pour nous, euh, ces filles sont belles. Mmh. Mmh. So they're donc, more beautiful. Voilà. Mmh. Ah. Euh, et donc, euh, parce que, euh, surtout pour les gens de ma génération, mmh. euh, il, faut, il a fallu qu'on attende peut-être d'avoir 15 ans mmh. pour se dire que les filles comme Rachel, toi, mmh. Melissa, mmh. les dark skin, elles sont belles aussi. Parce qu'on grandit parmi les blancs, donc l'image so real des filles qui sont belles, c'est des right. filles blanches d'abord. Mm -hmm. right. Et ensuite, on va voir les noirs, mais les noirs un peu light skin. Oui, ça rapproche à ce qu'elle avait dit avec voilà. euh, oui, mm -hmm. un rapprochement à... Voilà. Non, oui. Donc, elle aussi, ok, on se rapproche des noirs, elles sont belles. Donc, on grandit, et c'est surtout... Euh, alors, pour les garçons noirs, en France, ils vont beaucoup se mettre avec les blanches. Mm -hmm. Parce que les blanches avaient l'avoir des bébés métis. Mm -hmm. oh. So the black men want to be with the white women because they, women they have babies. babies. Right, because they have the Matisse babies. But that happens in the States too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, States too. Yes. right, 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 right. All right, guys, look. This is pretty much it. We can talk a little bit about romance if you guys want. What has your romance been here like, y'all, as black expats here in France? Any of y'all in any committed relations with a French person here? I was going to mention no it's, it's something it's kind of relevant to the conversation sure, sure, I was having sure. before and um, you know I feel like as things are changing and black men are more supportive there's also the flip side 
black men are so fetishized, like sexually, mm. in the media, in everywhere uh, in Western culture right now. Yeah. And some black men take advantage of it, fair yeah, enough. Absolutely. But you know, like, you do. there's that level, like when you meet a white woman and like make a level, or like, that's the also thing. like like a badge of like, I'm with it, I'm like being, I'm with yeah. you, you know, I'm with the strong, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, how can you tell us an English guy here, Nigerian English, <coughs> British, British, Nigerian um, British, because he had to school me on the difference between British, British and English. <laughs> um, <laughs> how do you find if a woman is really interested in you for you and not your color? Honestly, I've not well, dated a white woman in a. So you've only dated black French. No, no, I've not dated a white date... woman in a long time. I, I wouldn't say no. I've never said never. Mm -hmm. of, course, of course, it's hard enough finding your person. Like I wouldn't, sure, sure. I wouldn't rule it out, but. So have you dated French <coughs> women here, or have you dated expat women here? Both. Yeah. And like, has how has that been for you? Has it been a positive experience? Negative? Yeah. Yeah, I've had a good time. So it's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> that, that wasn't the question. That's that like, I mean, that's like so it's obvious, the same right? as you were saying that you have a good time <laughs> <Okay>. in London. <laughs> you have a good time in London, and you have a good time here. Mm -hmm. um, There's no difference. Oh, it's completely different. Um, oh, okay. Uh, the date culture is completely different here. I just really wanted to point out that I know my black friends, in fact, fun enough, all my black close male friends are married to black women. Mm -hmm. And not that it was like a straight conscious decision, but it, it becomes like, it's just, what it is. it's just what it is. And we recognize how exoticized black men have become in the media, it's like, mm -hmm. So to be safe, you're like, no, you just stick with Yeah, life. yeah, it's just, you know, sometimes, <laughs> so, someone said to me, like, he broke up with his white girlfriend and she removed um, BLM from her Twitter. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yo! Oh, oh no! no. 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 That is. That is cool. That is so cool. That's funny. It's funny. <laughs> Oh my God, thank you so much for joining us today. We are just so excited to just be able to share this information. So for those of you who are thinking about coming to France or thinking about going to any other country that is not your own, um, do it. No matter what you may feel about it or think about it or be afraid of it, just do it. Go, 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 go. Because I think the number one lesson that we're all learning and that we're all seeing is that humility is key, mm -hmm. gratitude is key, and if you're clear on your vision of why you're moving and why you're doing it, that all is possible. Even if they say it's not possible in France, <laughs> it is possible. But like she states, you have to have strategy, you have to be strategic, you have to know how to adapt yourself in this culture to get what you need, yeah? so. Anywhere you live, guys, if it's outside of your country, you have to be adaptive, you have to be flexible, be humble, and with gratitude, okay? <laughs>